Welcome to Rate Your Pain 1 to 10. We have Andrea back as promised, um, kind of as a two-parter, I guess you could say. Last time, um, you know, actually, what was the last topic? I, I can't even remember because it's already been a little while. This time, we're doing depression as promised. We kind of are going to go over a few things on depression, such as treatment, and then also just Andrea's personal experience, her personal tips, and possible tricks if she has anything up her sleeve. Uh, so first, let's start off. Would you say that your your depression comes in waves um, or has it been more consistent of a regular factor with your RSD? Um, it's definitely gotten way better over the years. Um, but I think like in the back of your mind, I think it's always like lurking, whether or not you're paying attention to it is a different story. Um, cause I know at least like when I'm flaring, that's when I really like notice it because there's nobody here, you know, right. Right. like, and you know, once you've kind of gotten over that initial hump of accepting the depression right your new life um, and mourning your old yeah. life yeah. yeah then you know you kind of come out of it and you're living life again as best you can mm -hmm. and you might not need you know the drugs that are probably pushed on you to you right. know deal with your depression and right. so you're not having that constant medication in your system so it's gonna fluctuate mm -hmm. unless you're taking other self-care into consideration which even then doesn't really put it at bay it just kind of helps you in the moment more so yeah I, i've noticed for myself um it's kind of like you said before when you have a bad flare-up that it almost like it goes hand in hand with your flare ups <laughs> and bad days that the depression just comes on. And, you know, they say RSD is a very psychological disease as well. And I do believe that. I don't believe that's the whole part of it, but I do believe that is a part of it. And yeah, uh, yeah so I agree. I, I think that just kind of for me personally, it goes hand in hand. And that's why, like, when you're at like a, bigger you know pain clinic versus just like an individual doctor you know they bring in not just a pain management doctor but a neurologist and a psychologist yeah. and you know all those people to take into consideration every aspect of your life so that they can try to you know if the pain is high let's at least see if we can stabilize the mood and the emotions because yeah. i know you know when I hit like the worst depression of my life during this, um, just my emotions and how I would react to things. Like I couldn't hold things in my hand. And when I drop and break something like that, I would have a freak out. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, um, <laughs> it's almost like a trigger. And that's actually yeah. one of the next questions I wanted to bring up is, um, you know, what are some of your triggers? Because I know that we have them. And like you just said, one of them, um, yeah. or at least I used to be one. Yeah. Um, but do you feel you have a lot of, not maybe a lot, but do you have triggers that really will just almost like, just boom, you're depressed? I think, you know, when I drop things, because it still happens, mm -hmm. you know, even if I'm in remission from, you know, whether it was my pregnancy or my ketamine infusions, you know, that gets rid of the pain, but it doesn't get rid of all the other side effects. Right. Or not side effects, but symptoms, you right. know, like right. my hands shake like no tomorrow. There's sometimes where it's just like flailing around and, I'm, right. you know, like can't do anything. Now, probably more so than before, like if my son like touches my arm and like it's just like excruciating but I can't yell at him for it. He doesn't or, know any better, yeah. Yeah, 
where I could, you know, yell at my husband because you know, but <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I could throw something at his head and be like, what the hell? Right. Oh, that's but... funny because uh, when we just went and visited our mutual friend, Trudy, my wife and I visited her. And when we went in and I said hi to her husband and she said, oh, yeah, I told him before you got here, don't touch him because she knew about you. Like just, you know, yeah. she didn't know where or what my uh RSD where it was she didn't know how bad it was or whatnot so it's in my leg so it's okay if he wants to give me a hug or whatever yeah, <laughs> but I'm sure I probably hit Trudy once or twice <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why she's so aware of it <laughs> she remembers yeah. but you know it's it's those little tiny things that most people would be like what's the big deal mm -hmm. but you know, those are those everyday things that people take for granted where we're like, fuck, you know, like we just can't handle it. Right. Yeah. So do you, do you have any special tricks you do, you know, like any secrets that help you that you do yourself? Like I know some people when they're depressed, you know, they, they have natural remedies, you know, um, mm -hmm. go to your happy place, so to speak. Yeah. What do you do for when you have your bad times? Um, I usually just try to chill out and, you know, I'll try to take like a, a bath and just zone out, put some music on, read a good book, get out of my head, mm -hmm. go somewhere else. It like resets me. Right. And then another one is forcing myself to go out. That's that's a good one because you know it's like we don't want to we just want to go wallow in our own misery and if you could just push yourself to get out the door even if it's you know a trip to the store you know but yeah. like if you can get yourself to go to a friend's house or domestically what are we doing at home we're sitting in bed or watching tv or isolating ourselves yeah and that's only going to make it worse I think that's a, that's a really, really good one. Um, I and personally I think, wouldn't have thought of that. And I think people should try that more than anything. <laughs> and, you know, it's like a, a, a lot of us, if not all of us, complain about how when we get diagnosed with this and people don't know what it is, mm -hmm. how they kind of back off and stop asking us to go places. But, you know, in reality, we flake on them at just as much as they're flaking on us. That's true. So, you know, it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. You know, they need to reach out and understand to us, but we also need to kind of get over that hump and keep our social life. It's up to us. We can't blame anybody else for us having lack of people in our life. Right. And our pain's going nowhere. And, you know, it's like I learned early on that, you can't keep complaining about it. You can't keep crying about it. Mm -hmm. And you just got to move on and it becomes your new norm. And, exactly. you know, a lot of people can't understand that, but it does become our new norm. And so if that's the case, go out normally. I mean, I, I'm i not one to talk there really. I do stay home a lot most of the time, but I try to go out as much as I can and you know, even if it's just for my dog walk, that's fine. But, you know, we have a few different friends that we like to hang out with frequently. And even if it's just going out to dinner with them and then hanging out their house for the night, you know, even till yeah. nine or 10 o'clock at night, like at least it's doing something. Yeah. And a lot of times I'll be in a lot of pain the next day because we'll be outside in the cold or something and just the cold cramps my muscles yeah. up and or even just a little bit extra being on my feet, but it lifts my soul. And that's, that's what's exactly. important. You need that. Yeah. I mean, we're going to be in bed in pain anyways. Yeah. We're going to be doing that enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that and get an animal. Yes. Right. I know they are the best. <laughs> they are. <laughs> I love my pets. We just uh, had our vet come and check our cat out yesterday or no on monday because 
she had a little weird incident and um she's like 15 or 16 years old so we're worried but they checked her out and the, they even brought like a kidney uh, failure kit to test her and all that and wow. they're checking her out and they're like she's fine you're gonna have her at least a couple more years so i was wow. like yes thank <laughs> you like that's such awesome news to hear you know yeah they're my best friends <laughs> pretty much you know yeah. yeah and they know they know when you're not feeling good oh yeah especially my cat she knows yeah. like when i'm having a bad day she not that she loves me being in pain or feeling bad but she loves <laughs> that i'm in bed all day because she lays there right next to me or on top of me and yeah. she stays there all day with me so cats um, are super intuitive like that yeah they're, they're kind of weird like that <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about the common, you know, medical forms of treatment for depression and also like the pharmaceutical side of it. Um, let's talk about what, what doctors push on us and what doctors think will make us better. Um, uh, what's your opinion on that right off the bat? So I was in like a six week, like major depression when I first not when I first got it, but when I got my spinal cord stimulator put in because it made me way worse. Okay. So I didn't get out of bed unless it was to pee. I didn't take a shower. I wasn't eating nothing. So they put me on like five antidepressants at once. <laughs> wow. Do you mind saying any of them or you don't have to? It's... Any of them? I don't, don't even remember. To. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> That's a personal like question. So, like, ago. okay. No, if I knew what they were, I would say it, but I honestly don't remember what they are. Yeah, um, but that was a while ago. Yeah. Um, and then I moved back from Kansas back home with my parents. And my mom was like, I think you're on too many drugs because hmm. you should not be this happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, but I'm happy. I'm like, coming out of and you're saying I'm too happy yeah okay, no, I guess. <laughs> so we cut those back and apparently I got less happy but not depressed I don't know <laughs> back to my normal self I mean yeah it's like <laughs> nobody should be too happy all the time even though that sounds great but yeah um so I mean they definitely helped for a while um and then I just kind of got back into life and reconnecting with friends and getting out of the house more um life. which i definitely think is what fully pulled me through um me and megan's friends were in a band and i was kind of like their band mom and yeah. they took me on tour with them and <laughs> like so cool you know that was probably like one of the highest pain times of my life this is before i went into any remission but, you know, just being out and living again, like, mm -hmm. pulled me right back out of that yeah. depression I was in. It um, doesn't give you time to think about it, too, especially when you're on tour and doing stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And it was helpful because when we, we were down south, um, one of my friends who had RSD, she was 17 at the time. Her mom was like, yeah, come stay with us, you know, no problem. So I was able to, you know, relate with them because we had, you know, a couple days off. So I could just like veg out on their couch and like recoup yeah. days and stuff. Um, so it was nice to be able to do that. Um, and then my son, you know. Yeah. But um, meds. Um, Definitely talking to a therapist was pushed on me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and then from the therapist, it was writing everything down in a journal or doing biofeedback or, right. you know, close your eyes and imagine you're in Hawaii and you can hear the waves and the yeah. breeze along your face. And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> this is not me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be nice if that worked. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it may work for the minute. 
I was like, you could put me on a plane to Hawaii and then I'd feel way better, but... That might turn me around a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Leave me there for a month, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I've heard of other people doing, like, um, shock therapy in their brain. Um, yeah, I've heard of that. Um, I, I, I think there was a study going on right when I first got it. And... Um, I, I heard a lot about it from one of the doctors I was going to, and it kind of creeped me out, to be honest. It wasn't something I was willing to try, especially that early on, but I yeah. still don't know if I'd try it today. It's pretty intense. Yeah. That reminds me of, like, way back in the day where they're, like, cutting people's brains out and doing lobotomies. And yeah, I was just... Weird shit like that. No thanks. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, you know... I think this is something common too for a lot of people and I'm sure I've mentioned this before. I might have even mentioned it in our last video, but like when I first got diagnosed with RSD, I was looking at my um, doctor's notes from a visit and my diagnosis and all that, that he marked down cause it was a new doctor. So he was like marking down what he was diagnosing me with and depression was on there. And in the beginning, I, I wasn't depressed yet. I didn't even know this was long term. I didn't realize the depth of what I had. I thought I was still going to get better. Yeah. And so I wasn't really depressed at all. Straight up, I was not. But he marked it down. And I think they just automatically mark it down because they know we're going to be. And it's yeah. going to happen. Um, and yeah, I had to see like uh, a therapist pretty much right away. And they did like the whole psych evaluation on the computer where you have to answer all the crazy questions that are like all the same, but repeated backwards and forward. Yeah. You know, so I, I went through that a couple times and, um, but as time went on, yeah, that depression kicked in hard and I still deal with it a lot. And, you know, sometimes it's compounded with other real life issues like this past month. Um, between my family and my wife's family, we've had three deaths. Um, well, December 29th was the first one, and then two more following since then. And when you have all that going on, too, and you compound yeah. it with the depression from your RSD and all that, it can make things really hard, you know? And that's why it's, like, kind of hard for me right now trying to keep up with the YouTube thing going on because, like, I have a lot of real-life stuff going on too and yeah. that depression it's been hard lately i'm not gonna lie um but doing things like this kind of keeps my mind off it and so even though i may have not been wanting to do this right now because i feel like you know i got too much going on it's good for me and yeah. now you know like we're doing it and i'm stoked we're doing it and we need to keep moving on with life and that's what's important too you can't just like you can't get caught up and stuck yeah you know you got to keep moving forward so it, it it definitely helps being able to connect with other people who have it because mm -hmm. they know what we're going through yeah. we can bitch and cry to each other as much as we want and no judgment gonna, no judgment because yeah. Who knows? Last week you were in the same spot I am right now. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if I had just gotten it and you were the expert on it, you know, you'd have my back and be like, look out for this, 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 this. It's a strong, uh, it's a, you know, even when you first meet someone, it's like a strong bond we all have right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of people I've met off this channel. Um, and from some of the groups too on Facebook, but like, you know, you almost talk like you've been friends forever and it's cool yeah. because it, like you said, the RSD veterans really are there for the new people who are just going through it. And you can go look on the forums yourself and you'll see right away. It's like so much love going on there. So, you know, that is one thing to look forward to. And you have to. You have to connect, you as you said. To. Yeah. If you don't, Back, back when I got it, there was, like, one support group online. 
I mean, figure 16 years ago, MySpace was just coming out. Facebook wasn't out yet. Yeah. So I know which one you're talking about because um, Alan. I've heard you mention and Alan's told me about <laughs> it. Yeah, I've, I've heard about it from a couple of people. I think, um, yeah, was Melinda on it too? I we're think the, maybe. We're, we're the RSD OGs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. I went and checked out the group and I think I even... Um, you know, requested to join. I don't know if I was ever approved or whatever, but I don't know. We're pretty uh exclusive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My RSD is not bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're gonna kind of wrap it up here, but I wanted to, of course, you've given lots of good tips, but are there any other last uh things that you might want to add or fill us in on? It is okay to be depressed. It's okay to mourn your previous life, but you need to move forward from that and embrace your new life and just keep going. I mean, it's called a suicide disease for a reason. Don't let it take you. Don't become a statistic. I think that's, that's very important. Keep moving forward. And like you said, you know, branch out, talk to people. And even if it's just through email or text, like there's a few people that I text and email almost daily. So, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think we're a good support system for each other. So totally. even if it's uncomfortable, just try it. Just, just push yourself to do it. Do it. Do it. Well, thank you, Andre, for coming back on. As always, it's been nice. Anytime. And please remember, if you like this video, to like it, give it a good thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Peace.